Hey guys, Cable Guy Ken here. Gonna do a little video real quick. It's a little bit chilly out today. Uh, it is 42 degrees right now, so it's a little nippy, not bad. Uh, got on just a little fleece that I wear when I'm working. Um, gonna do a video for you sharpening my more knife. Now it is sharp right now, but uh, I'm still gonna show you the basics of what I go through. Um, both in the in the field and what I do when I'm at home because I use two different systems. Um, nor I don't I don't take everything out in the field with me. It's just too much bulk. I've got one little diamond diamond sharpener that I use when I'm in the field. And I'm going to heat me up a little bit of dinner with my little German mess kit here and my hobo stove. So let me get my fire lit, get my little stove going, heat me up some ramen noodles, and uh, I'll get right back with you. Get ready to. to Cook my meal, and I said, "Well, you know, let me show my let me show my brothers what I'm working with here. Make sure I'm in frame here, real good for you. There you go. All right. Uh, this is a little German mess kit that one of my brothers sent me. Uh, Mike Davis sent it to me. We did a, a little trading, so to speak. Um, with the exception of the stove that I use, depending on which which burner I'm going to use, everything is in my little kit. We got the little uh, tray here." Got another little tray that I keep my bottle of alcohol in, and it actually, when I don't drop it on the ground, the two rest together. I think the idea behind that was, you know, you can sit down and eat, what have you, but I don't use it like that. I usually, I hadn't even used this one yet. I may use it just to put some cocoa or something in today real quick. And then in the bottom of it, I've got uh, two different kinds of bullion. And I've got two different kinds of stove. I've got the stove that Bill Sigler made for me that is probably the hottest burning thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, if, I'm, if I've got a good windscreen and I'm going to be cooking a lot of water, I'll use it like that. I'll put a windscreen around it. But if I'm just going to be heating up enough water for a meal and a, and a drink, I've got just a little can stove that I made. I've actually got two different ones in here. Um, this one has more vents on it, so it just puts out a lot more heat, and it literally just drops down into the bottom of my little hobo stove. Get it centered up in there. Get me a couple of ounces of alcohol down in the stove, and a little bit around the inside of it to, to get it primed and going. And I'm gonna set that out of the way. Get me some water in my cup. And I'm going to be making some uh, ramen noodles and a little bit of cocoa, so I'm going to want a couple of cups here. Now the ramen noodles say to use two cups of water. I use one cup just because it makes it a little bit uh, stronger. It adds more flavor to the seasoning pack. I know you can't see it burning, but it is burning. And uh, it won't take it but a second to bloom. And I'll go ahead and set that up there. And just for the fun of it, that is two cups of water. And we'll start a little timer on it to see how long it takes for it to uh, get two cups of water boiling out here in 42 degree weather using just a little hobo stove and a little alcohol burner down in there. Yes, she's still burning. Put that back on there. Got me some a little bag of cocoa. I had to give away my little vials that I usually keep it in. And we'll set that there. Got my ramen noodles and my sharpener here. Alright. Um, now, the, the more knife, being that it is a Scandinavian grind, means it has just one single bevel all the way to the edge. Um, most of your American style knives or anything like that, it'll have a hollow or a flat, flat grind, grind rather, and then down at the very end, you'll grind that at another bevel, which will give you your sharp edge. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, any of the American grinds or any of the other grinds, but I've heard all my life just how sharp and how durable these scandy edges are, and until I received this, I never would have believed it. Um, the cool thing about a Scandi grind is they're the easiest in the world to sharpen. Now, if I'm at home, I've got 
a few items that I use. This is just a Smith's trihome. It's got a coarse, a medium, and then a fine. These are Arkansas stones. This is just a aluminum oxide stone. And if I'm going to be at the house and I have time, I've just got a power of a bottle here. This was a purple power spray bottle, but I've got simple green in it. And I'll just give this a good soaking down with some simple green. And what you want to do, I'm going to see if I can't zoom in on that uh, stone for you there a little bit. Maybe get a little bit closer. Sorry about the moving, y'all. All right. All you're going to want to do is lay your knife flat on that stone starting at the very back edge or at the where it would be a ricasso if it had one or a choy and just tilt that blade forward and what I usually do is just push my finger down on the edge and you'll see it's tilting that blade up at just the right angle and I will let it drag slowly. Now I'm not putting pressure on this I'm not using a lot of force and you'll notice I'm keeping my finger what we'll reverse this. I'm not right hand or left handed, but we'll reverse this just to show you. I keep my finger in the same place, and that helps to keep that edge flat against that stone. Now, this knife is already extremely sharp, and I'm going to go back to the way I'm used to doing it for speed. But we'll do this just to show you, you know, basically my process. Now, if the edge is extremely dull, I'll start with this coarse stone and I'll do this and I'll make maybe 10 strops on each side the whole time making sure that I'm keeping equal pressure with my finger and making sure that I'm keeping it pressed down at that right bevel now this is the area of your knife that you normally use the most so most of the time I'll just give it a couple of straight passes just like that and then strop it off in my hand just to get any grit off of it and then we'll move on up to the medium stone the same process just give it a good wetting down now if you've already used oil on your stones you can soak these in uh, any good degreaser like simple green purple power anything like that and get the oil out of them scrub them clean and go back to using uh, simple green or just water or as I'll do a lot of times with my diving home just a little spit so, um, my process I'm a little bit methodical sometimes with my knives I don't necessarily count the strokes themselves but what I will do is make sure if I do 10 strokes with a core stone I want to do 20, 20 strokes with the next one, 20 strokes rather, with the next stone and then I'll do 40 strokes with the next finer stone and continually, I mean into where the last one I may not do the the double strokes but I try to keep it even and I try to do more because what you're doing is you're polishing up that edge and by polishing it you're making it thinner and we got some steam going on in my little cup over there you're taking off those little burrs and you're just making it pull that much easier through the wood or whatever the cut medium is that you're trying to use and we'll feel that see how it feels um, after a while you can feel any burrs or anything like that that may be on the edge of that blade you can feel them with your hand especially if you just use a real light touch and you'll know where you might need to spend a little bit more time and you'll know what you need